Good afternoon. This is Tina. How are you doing? Um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the front controller design pattern. Um, I had a playlist, okay, which is uh, describe all the almost all the features about uh, the uh, Spring MVC five or oh, five. Um, when I start, I didn't talk about I uh, directly the first video I record is talking about uh, Spring MVC the five major uh, five major components, and uh, I didn't talk about uh, the front controller. But actually, before the five major components, it's better to talk about the front controller design pattern. Okay, what is used for? What's the benefit when we're using the front controller? Why in Spring MVC in the web.xml, we have to configure one servlet, and that's the only servlet we have, right? So for most of the MVC framework, you will see they're gonna using the front controller design pattern like a long time ago. Uh, some people heard about the struts, uh, which is uh, one of the framework used in uh, work with the servlets, right? So it uses the front controller. And uh, I don't know .NET, but uh, my friend told me they .NET also using the front controller design pattern so uh, what is the front controller pattern why do we do that but uh, I will explain it based on my experience which is uh, Java based web application so no matter you using spring uh, MVC or not all of them is uh, servlet based APIs which is spring MVC is also built on top of the servlet uh, for all the Java web application uh, most most likely, okay, you are doing based on the servlet APIs. And uh, in one servlet, okay, in the servlet, S E R V, in the servlet, you only has uh, mostly you will override the two method. One is do get. One is do post. Okay. One servlet only can override can one servlet can only override one do get and one do post. Suppose you have a, let's give one example. You have a product. Okay, you want to do CRUD operation, like create a product, retrieve the product, update product, delete product. Those operations on the product. Okay particular products or, or product collection for the create which is save and uh, the update is also mod modified right and the delete for these three or uh, three operation you probably were using the post method and uh, suppose you have a product servlet okay your product servlet only has uh, one do post so for this do post method how can they handle three actions create update and delete in this case probably you have to have uh, if else condition or probably you have uh, multiple product servlet okay so you can have a multiple do post method handle for different uh, scenarios and the read is this one read because it's retrieve you can use in the get method right it can go to the do get method so in this case it's not very convenient or it's not a good design to either you have if else condition or either you have multiple the servlets okay you just kind of like uh, you have uh, repetitive tasks to create the product servlets or you have a condition in a post. And another scenario, suppose now for you have a product you need to maintain or you have the user information needed to maintain, the user also have the CRUD report, CRUD, CRUD, okay, o uh, operations. 
and you have uh, two domain models. And think about it, for this create, and for this create, and also for this update, and for this update, or probably for this delete too, okay, and for this delete. In product sublet or in the user sublet, suppose this do post method, okay? This do post method in product sublet or in the user sublet, you have a request and a response, right? It should be somebody request response. There are some repetitive tasks. What are they? Suppose you said you have to retrieve the information the user submit from a form, right? And then you have to do what? You have to using request dot get parameter. And suppose is a product name, right? You have to do string and the name. And then you also need to call product dot set name. And then put this name. So for all the properties in the product, first you have to retrieve and then you call set. It's not only for one domain. And for this domain, you have to do for the SF, you have to do for the, what? This one is update. Update, you have to retrieve all the information the user changed, right? And delete probably is the ID. But for all the domain inside your project, you have to do this repeated task. And there's other things we, uh, we understand for request that get a parameter. Everything, to the return type, always is a string type, okay? And suppose in the product, you might have a long, you might have a double, you have, might have an integer type. Then if you, you, you have to convert to specific type, you might, you might uh, have uh, some issues, which is a uh, uh, number format exception. And for some uh, old design, they might have a uh, two domain. One is uh, called the product form. The other one is a product. Okay, this is actual domain model. And this product form model is to grab everything from, uh, to hold the information the user submit from the page and hold in this object. And we were using this object to do the validation, and if it, is, uh, it doesn't have a number format exception, then we will call the set method in the product actually using the different types. So these are kind of the problems when we just using the servlets, okay? And what front controller is? Okay, let me make it larger. Yeah, zoom out. Let me do zoom out again. Okay, what is, uh, let me make it smaller and I'll make it bigger. 100, huh? Mm, very good. Front controller is like this. Oh, I haven't, I should go another one first. So previously when we do servlets, okay, here. Okay. So in our uh, Tomcat server, okay, you have to have a Tomcat or other container. You have a servlet. Suppose this one is a product servlet, okay, and you have a user servlet, okay, user servlet. So when the client make a request, suppose the URL is go to like this one, uh, add product. When you go here, then what you're gonna do is uh, the it will find Tomcat will based on URL find to delegate your request to this product servlet do get or do post right, and then it's gonna return right. This is one, and uh, if your uh, if you the client make another request, this request is slash add user. Okay, then your request will go to will go to the user servlets, right? And then goes back. 
right? And uh, when you do like this kind of design, you're gonna have the problem I talked about, like uh, if else condition handle different operations, and also you have lots of uh, repetitive tasks like the request get a parameter the, and the setter, and probably have uh, two domain class represent uh, one kind of information. Okay, uh, you have the duplication, right? So for the Spring MVC and other MVC framework, they were using something called the front controller, which we are design pattern, which will solve the problem we talk about. So what is the front controller design pattern? Compared with this one, okay, still you have your Tomcat. Okay, here is your servlet. This servlet is called the front controller servlet. In Spring, it is called dispatcher servlet. Okay, and uh, inside uh, your Tomcat, uh, no, sorry, this is Tomcat. Inside your entire web application, you or a Java-based web application, you only has one servlet. In previously, we have multiple servlets, right? In when we are using front controller, okay, MVC from you only has one servlet, which some uh, call front controller, some call uh, what thing? Uh, dispatch servlet in Spring MVC. And uh, you have other regular Pojo. Probably Pojo with annotations, okay? So no matter when you have a, a request called add product, okay? All the request comes. Suppose I have another request is called uh, add user. Or you have a another which is a delete product. All the request comes, it will all handled by this front controller, which is the only servlet, okay? Only servlet in your application. And uh, the front controller, this servlet will keep some kind of map, okay? What's the map doing? The map we are do is uh, the map, okay, uh, sorry, I didn't put it here. The map, it most likely will have a full, two map. One is a URL, and this one is will go to your controller, okay, controller. You have another map, which is URL, and another one is called a method. You will have a two map, Okay, the front controller will paste the map first URL to the controller. So it will say, okay, the other product will handle the by this Pojo. Okay. And uh, inside the Pojo, which method we are using another map. And other user will go to handle the by this Pojo. Okay. And uh, the other product, okay, uh, the other product will also go to the Pojo. So, Front controller act as the kind of like a facade. It will receive all the requests, but itself doesn't process the request. It will, according to the map, we are using the URL, find the right method in the right controller actually doing the task. And after the Pojo finish the tasks, it will return the view back to the front controller. Front controller then return back to the client side. So what's the benefit when we're using the front controller design pattern? The benefit you can get is, you can have, uh, uh, first, you can have, uh, uh, you can work with the portal. In the portal, you can have uh, multiple methods. Okay, you can have uh, multiple methods. In the method, each method handle handle crowd operation. Okay, and you can do what? You can do the declar declarative routing. It's like uh, what thing? Like a Spring MVC, you have the uh, annotation, get a mapping, uh, post mapping. 
you declare okay your routing to each method okay and also you can have what data binding Uh, I should have one comment automatic okay so what because when we have suppose you have a post okay you want to save some information and uh, before we while to particular method in the controller okay we will find out where the, the oh, sorry, sorry the system itself will automatically grab all the information from the form using request request get parameters and a way to automatically bind to the objects which are the domain objects and you can also inject other bin validation or other things okay and uh, what other benefits uh, I think uh, this uh, these three probably is the uh, most uh, profound oh that's now you don't have the the form being yes isn't needed previously probably you have a two being okay product form and a product but when we use the front controller you just need to have one domain object one domain class there's no need for the two okay so uh, that's the front controller let's uh, summarize front controller is uh, the only in your java based web application it's the only servlet which handle all the requests no matter what kind of url okay all handled by front controller and from the controller we are keep two maps okay the two maps maps will help front controller to find the actual uh, the actual methods in the controller which we actually process the request okay and after you have using the front controller you will get lots of the benefits like to do the data binding you have declarative routing only one domain class and you don't need to have multiple servlets right you don't need to have a multiple server you just have one controller called the product controller and you can declare multiple methods one method handle for sell one method for update one method for delete one method for the retrieve okay and it might has other benefits i cannot think of them uh, so far uh, you uh, you can also do the validation sorry last one validation okay so uh, anyway uh, that's it for the front controller. I suggest that you to watch the front controller first, then watch the next video is the Spring MVC, the major five components. Then you will have a better understanding why Spring MVC only has one servlet, why they call dispatch servlet, and what are the view resolver, and why it can do a data binding. Okay, those benefits all gain from the front controller design pattern. Uh, so that's really uh, the end of the video. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.